Good afternoon. This is Kevin with the Kingsport Senior Center, and I'm up here at Bays Mountain, and I'm interviewing my good friend, Ranger Megan. And today we're going to discuss the uh, beautiful dam behind us. And what Megan's going to do is she's going to give us some great information on how this dam uh, became the way it is and, and how it was constructed and all that good stuff. Yeah. So, Megan, what? Uh, when did the dam uh, get built? So back in 1907, a gentleman by the name of J. Fred Johnson, very instrumental in Kingsport's history, he came up to the Bays Mountain area and he decided that, hey, I think I can construct a structure of some sort because he was, if you look around, we are actually in the middle of a bowl. And he thought that he could collect some of the water that would come off the sides of the uh, mountain for uh, water purposes for the city. So what he did was he purchased 1,200 acres in the Bays Mountain area, and in 1914, he sold that property over to the City of Kingsport's Water Department. And then from 1915, the City of Kingsport hired 35 to 40 men to construct the dam that you currently see behind me. And in 1916, they decided to go up six more feet from the current uh, level of where they were in 1915. So that's basically how the dam came about here at Bay Sound. Okay, uh, during this construction time, you know, this is, you're talking back in the early 1900s. Now, how was the, uh, I mean, there's a lot of rock and steel here. How did they manage to, to get that stuff to the mountain and off the mountain, you know, to clear it out, to make the dam? So we had a lot of family that lived in the Bay Mountain area. And these particular individuals had equipment that they lent to the city of Kingsport to use in order to get a lot, a lot of the large masses of rock up to where we currently are standing. So Jer Jerome Pierce actually donated a wagon and we have a couple of small rock quarries here at the park where a lot of the rock at the time was chiseled out and brought down for the base of the dam itself. And so there were several men that use a, a wide variety of hand tools and use a lot of um, elbow grease at the time to go ahead and construct the dam that we currently have uh, in front of us. And um, just how many men was, I didn't think you said it, but how many men actually constructed the dam? Did they have working on the dam? So the city hired roughly about 35 to 40 men and they spent roughly about 10 hours a day for quite a few days constructing the dam that you see behind us. Oh, that's, that's pretty interesting. Now, once the dam was completed, was the uh, water here, or, or how did that become so part of the park? So, as, as the dam started uh, to be constructed, and it started to um, have different levels to it, what happened is it started to collect water. And then over a period of time, um, that water then was enough to go ahead and provide a water source for the city of Kingsport. So that water source was here from 1916 to 1944. During that particular time, residents of Kingsport started to um, pull out quite a bit of water. And as the population started to increase during that particular time period, what happened is uh, so did the amount of water that the residents were looking for. So it's been said that the residents almost drained the reservoir dry a couple of times because of population increase. So around 1938-39, what happened is that the city decided that they should look for an alternate uh, uh, source of drinking water. So then in 1944, the drinking water started over at the South Fork of the Holston River. So from 1944 to the present day, residents of Kingsport received their drinking water from the South Fork of the Holston. Okay. So another question that I've had that's pretty interesting too, and we discussed the um, Step like stones here. Was that something they did, or is that something that came afterwards? Because, like we were talking earlier, the, the dam, if you notice, the area goes around this way. Right. You know? So that was a form of technology that they had during um, the, the mid uh, 1900s. And that particular type of technology allowed you to create a step, allowed you to make a base, and then what you do is create another step. And you're kind of like going out a little bit, but you're still building off of that original form that you had at the beginning and so that's how they were able to create that particular curve that you see currently. Okay. And you got the um, the steel piping that's on the dam itself and then coming out. Is 
is that something for uh, the water, releasing the water? Or Correct. Some of those particular pipes were used for uh, filtration opportunities to hook up for the main pipe going on down Dolan Branch to bring the water on down to the city of Kingsport. Some of those pipes are actually shut off valves, but today we don't use those particular pipes at all because we allow for the water to naturally flow over our spillway. So we do not turn any valves on or anything like that to allow for extra water when there is extra water in a reservoir. So those particular pipes were used at one time um, to help bring the water on down to the city. So what you're saying is that we don't really have that big of a problem Explain to everybody how it really filled so, up, you know. So over time, um, since we are at the bottom of a basin, um, we have a lot of mountain ridges around us that the water that goes over those mountain ridges will eventually trickle down into this basin here. And then over a period of time, what happens is that that uh, water will then eventually start to pool. And then it'll start to build up. And then as it starts to build up, more rain will then start to collect uh, within what previously was was provided and so you then you start having this really great opportunity So this particular reservoir here is 44 acres So it did take some time for this particular reservoir to become 44 acres now Did it happen within a year or two years? It took a little bit more than that for this 44 acre reservoir to really develop however uh, it does take snow and rain and Mother Nature to help us out. Now, you have to remember, back in the 1900s, we actually had winters. We had a lot of snow. And so in April and May, when the snow starts melting, that melting will fall right down into this basin, uh, able to go ahead and increase the level of water in this reservoir here. Now, over the past few years, we haven't had the opportunity to have a really great snow. We had a few days here and there, However, we had more rainy days, and that extra rain, again, filled up our particular reservoir. And then, again, what happens is that once the reservoir becomes full or saturated, you will get what you hear behind me here, extra water spilling over the spillway. Okay. Well, another question is like on the cost of the upkeep. Um, over the years, I've noticed that there's been a lot of... Um, upkeep done to this area here where they cleaned everything up and when we was driving up I thought it was new bricks and stuff. You know what what is the cost of just keeping this thing running year year to year? I mean you may not know the, the figure but right just give us a so in two thousand eight so two thousand and eighteen we had a company called Inland Construction and they're uh, a local company 
and they came in and they actually gave our dam a facelift. And what they did was they power washed over 100 years of grime and gunk onto the rock itself. And then they were able to, with our engineers, figure out some of the buttresses towards the bottom shifted over a period of time. So they were able to realign and get those buttresses back into shape. And then also too, in between the, um, the limestone rocks, what we did was we uh, took out the old mortar and put in some of the new mortar, again, giving it another facelift. Once all of that was completed, we put in um, kind of like foundation on, on women when they put their makeup on. And so we kind of put a sealer on the uh, um, dam that you see behind me here. And hopefully that sealer will then go ahead and be able to uh, stay on the dam for a very long time. It seals the rock in so that you don't have all that grime and those pores of the rock. And then also too, it helps with making sure that water doesn't seep into the rock because in the 1900s, they didn't have sealer. They had no idea what sealer was. So due to modern technology, we can make improvements to help keep this dam around for another 100 years. Sounds good to me, that's great. I mean, um, I can't think of any more questions so some of you guys <laughs> so some of you guys that are watching this may think I remember coming up to the park when there wasn't a handrail on the dam and that's true so back in the 1950s um, there are pictures that are circulating around that you can find of our dam and every so often there are posts with a lifeguard uh, ring on the post and those particular rings um, were for in case of somebody happened to be swimming yeah, in the reservoir yes. And you can throw you know, something to them very quickly. And again, we didn't have these uh, uh, handrails here. We didn't have the handrails up until the mid-70s. Right. And so, so this is the handrail here is uh, fairly new. Now due to the update um, that we had in 2018, what happened is that we painted the uh, railings black and then we put in a new black fencing. Because some of you guys may remember the green fencing oh, that we yes. had here. So another improvement that we made to the dam itself is to have a nice black uh, fencing to blend in a little bit more with the surroundings yeah, itself. It looks a lot better. Yes. And you also said when we were talking about the fencing that you had some people that said that they had told you that they used to ride their bicycles across yes. here when there was no railing up. Exactly. <laughs> Just imagine taking the fencing down and then riding a bicycle not walking but just riding a bicycle along that walk walkway i mean we were we were able to do a lot of things at that point in time and so i i am very fortunate that we do have the handrails because sometimes i'm looking down in the water and i get too close and i hit the handrail i'm like whoa thank goodness this is here really? so i get too invested in looking down in the water and seeing the fish and so forth Especially when you get out there towards the middle, you know. Exactly. It's, it's deep out there. It is. It is very deep. <laughs> so, Kevin, um, what we're going to do is I'm going to take you on a little journey. That All means right. Kevin has to hike just a little bit. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go see the dam from a lower location. And we're going to go down to Dolan Branch. And we're going to show you what the waterfall looks like um, and also what the dam looks like from a lower location. Have you been on one of the programs today? I've never been on a program, I've been trying to do that. Should we go up to this rock area? Um, so we have some rock climbing up in that area. Okay, Megan, we're down here in this very beautiful area here that we just hiked to. And the question, one of the questions that we had was, how did we come about all the limestone that is used for the dam and, and around this area? All right. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a geology lesson. Millions and millions and millions of years ago, this area was actually part of the ocean. And in order for limestone to be created, what happened is that a lot of old uh, crustacean, along with sediment from sand over time, started building up on top of one another. And over time, pressure started pushing all that together, and a few other factors go in there, and it created limestone. Well then, as the continent of Pangaea broke apart, we ended up in the uh, um, uh, northern hemisphere. And then as um, the continent and different forces are pushing on our continent itself, what's happening is that uh, you have rock that will start to move on up 
through the ground and I'm up through to make um, rock being exposed, like the Rocky Mountains for instance, there's pressure that is being pushed upon the Pacific side and also the Atlantic side and everything in the middle has to go someplace, so it goes up. Same thing, um, we have what's called tectonic plates and tectonic plates will then uh, provide cracks in the um, bedrock of the different areas throughout the uh, continent and it will shift some of these rocks and some of the rocks move up, some of the rocks move down, some of them slide over one another. And so eventually over time we get to what we are seeing today. So we're surrounded by a variety of limestone here at this particular park, also northeast Tennessee and um, southwestern part of Virginia. That area has a lot of limestone. And so where we got the limestone for the uh, construction of the dam is basically in our backyard. Again, we had a couple of small rock quarries that had a lot of rock that they could chisel out. And then some rock was actually hauled in from the surrounding areas as well. But a lot of the rock was used here at Bays Mountain. Okay. Now, we got the... Amber got some good shots of the uh, water coming off the dam and, and coming down through here. Does it all, it just all runs down the mountain and you said it goes into the, um, which, uh... Right. So, <laughs> so right here, um, what Amber will do is he'll, she'll show you some of the great shots that she happened to get from the little waterfall over here. But then it uh, trickles down into this creek here and this is what we call Dolan Branch. And this particular branch will then eventually feed into the Holston River. The Holston River will then eventually drain into the Tennessee. The Tennessee River then eventually will drain into the Mississippi and then down to the Gulf of Mexico eventually. So eventually this water will get on down to the Gulf in some form or fashion. And uh, there are times that we can have quite a bit of water coming through here. There are times that it's very dry. So it just depends on the season how much snowfall and rain that we get throughout the year. Okay, uh, do we have any trails that some hikers wanted to hike down through there? We do. So off to our right hand side, there is a trail called Dolan Branch. And Dolan Branch can be accessed below the dam. And it is roughly a three tenths of a mile hike. Um, if you continue down the upper portion of the, um, of the uh, um, branch here, Dolan Branch, it will take you on down into Eastman and then you can then um, connect over to what's called the Eastman Forest Walk and it will take you into a really nice looking area down there. Now as you are hiking down Dolan Branch from time to time you'll see this big black cast iron pipe and that cast iron pipe was used to haul the water out from the reservoir on down to the city of Kingsport. So as you're uh, hiking around you'll be able to see periodically that pipe uh, coming out from the ground. Also there are some limestone steps that were put in several, 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 several years ago in order for men to uh, work around that particular pipe. So that pipe that they put in, that was um, put in with, with the dam when they did the water? It came, it came, it come yeah. after, or it came at the same time? First the what? dam was constructed and then the piping came in shortly after. Okay, that's some really good steel then. You got it. It's a, it's a, some really good iron, that's iron, for sure. That iron, stuff is yeah. not moving whatsoever. Yeah. Well, thank you guys very much. I hope you enjoy our little video today. And I hope this uh, will help you guys come on out to the park, kind of hang out and place your feet in our creek a little bit. I won't tell anybody. And also, right. too, stay tuned for our next episode where we will actually go along Dolan Branch and show you some of the trail along Dolan Branch uh, Trail. And we're also going to get Kevin and we're going to get him on up to the fire tower. So stay tuned and uh, keep posted on that adventure. Thank you all very much. Bye, y'all. Bye-bye.